Hello, and welcome to Global Data Themes Instant Insights. At Global Data, we define a theme as something that keeps a CEO awake at night, as businesses that invest in important themes will succeed, and those that don't will fail. Hello, and welcome to Instant Insights. I am Will Tyson, and today I'll be speaking to Steve Blitz, the Chief US Economist at TS Lombard, a leading independent investment research provider focused on global macro and strategy. Today, we're going to be discussing interest rates, Silicon Valley Bank, and the criminal indictment of a US president. Hello, Hi. Steve. Thank Hello. you for talking to me today. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> now, let's get straight into it. So the FOMC are due to meet in just a few weeks' time to decide the direction that US monetary policy is going to take. What are your early predictions, Steve? Well, I think they're kind of locked into doing another 25 basis point hike. And my guess is it's probably the last one that they do for the cycle. It has been the, a, a Fed so reluctant in, in raising rates. You know, part of it is simply because, you know, usually when you're in a tightening cycle, the central bank, not just the Fed, but any central bank is following inflation, right? So inflation's going up and they're raising rates, trying to slow things down slowly at first, and then they rush to catch up and get inflation, get the rates above inflation. This time around, they started with inflation very high because of all the COVID supply chain issues that we all know about. So they knew, we all knew that inflation was going to come down. They even now, especially with what's going on with the banks and everything else, they're still, and they keep betting on um, a disinflation. In other words, they're betting that inflation rate is going to drop down and that'll make their policy rate, the federal funds rate, look that much more constrictive, right? By being and constrictive, we're really saying that high above the inflation rate. And right now it's not. It's equal to the inflation rate. And the inflation rate in the United States seems to have settled in around 5% in core rate. And the funds rate is at 5%. And a year ago, I said they would guide to five and a half, but not quite get there. And I think that's probably still going to hold true. Better lucky than smart. That's really interesting. Yeah, I was going to say the last time you came on the podcast, you predicted a 5.25 to 5%, 5.5% terminal rate for the federal funds rate. And is that still the case? Yeah, I think so. And and some of the numbers, I think on the edges, you're starting to see the economy slow down. And it's got a real push now from um, the problem with the banks. You know, the banking problem is... Usually banks get into problems at this time of the cycle because loans they've made go bad, right? And so, and they're not reserved against those losses enough, and then the banks get into a problem. This time around, because of all the regulations that came in after 2008-9, the banks are sitting here with not a lot of loans against deposits. And that means more of their cash is kept either at the Fed or in treasury assets or mortgage-backed securities. So with an inversion of the curve, meaning with the short rates going up a lot, all interest rates rising, depositors don't want want to get paid, so they pull money out. And the banks now, they have to take a loss. They're negative in their return. The Fed stepped in. This is when SVB and all that and Signature Bank. Basically, what the Fed did to, to sort of keep the bank run from happening, or at least you know shutting banks, the Fed basically said, "Look, you can if you if you can't meet your deposit flows, you can borrow the money at par, and we'll fund it, and then you have the cash, and you don't have to take a loss." Once that happened, it slowed the panic. But it's positive it's still going to leave to find higher yield elsewhere, mainly the money market, mutual funds. The other side of this, though, is that banks faced with this problem recognize that they have to reset their balance sheet and that the best yielding asset for them to hold are reserves because they pay basically what the funds rate is paying. What the banks are doing is as money comes into the banks or as they reallocate the assets, they're lending less. Whenever banks lend less, economy shrink. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned that, especially considering Jeanette Yellen's recent speech, the US Treasury Secretary, where she was saying that she's not anticipating a downturn in the economy. What are your opinions on this? Well, I've never heard a Secretary of the Treasury or the or the chair of a central bank come out and say, I'm worried. 
I'm not saying that's what she thinks or doesn't think, but I'm just saying that that's certainly not something the Secretary of Treasury is ever going to say. Right. Yeah, I think so, she's just trying to keep confidence there. As you're a New Yorker, I feel like we have to ask you about what's going on in your state at the moment, with Donald Trump being the first US president to be criminally in- indicted. What do you think is going to be the fallout from this, and how can you see it going? I think that, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, much to my mother's eternal shame. And uh, so I, I became an economist instead. So I, I can't really tell you the legal, whether this will be guilty or not. I have no idea. The fact that it's been elevated to this level, there is to there is a political aspect to that. That's not to say that the case isn't strong or the case isn't legitimate, but you know, the, the trials are expensive. So that's why any good lawyer will say, you know, if you can settle this without going to trial, and that's well, in, in in that case, if it does continue to drag out, has it, or do you think it will affect the U.S. economy at all? Oh, I don't think it has any effect on the economy. I think politics in the United States has less effect on the economy than people seem to think. If we have a recession that gets particularly bad, they'll run in and they'll raise the debt ceiling, you know, and then and they'll spend more because nobody wants to have a, a stuck fiscal side if all of a sudden unemployment is 8%. You know, what's also it's interesting also about the politics of the House. So all tax and spending legislation by law from the Constitution comes out of the House of Representatives. Right now, everyone talks about McCarthy, who's the Speaker of the House, about him being held by the far right. But what's interesting is that there is a very large conservative Democratic crowd, or we'll say moderate crowd, among the Democrats. He can't. And there's been noise. Every once in a while, you read little things are coming up. And I wrote about this back last fall. He feels he can only govern the House through the Republican Party. If he shifted and said, you know what, I'm going to placate moderate Democrats who really aren't that far off in terms of their um, views from the moderate conservative, moderate Republicans. And I can create a majority that runs through all this stuff. When you read through the lines of some of his frustrations and some of the things that are going on, you sense that he feels that and he knows that. And we'll see whether he does that. That's where most of America is, right? The problem is that the most is that that moderate wing is partially in the Republicans and partially in the Democrats, and nobody's speaking to the moderate or willing to lead the moderates forward. And therefore, you can isolate the far left and the far right and get lots of things passed. And for and a it, final question, Steve, when do you think recession will hit the United States? My guess is mid year. So is is when it starts. We've already almost halfway through the first month of the second quarter. Recession starts when unemployment starts to go up and when the employment numbers turn negative, really more so than the unemployment rate. Uh, I think we're a month or two or three away from that. There's always one industry where it starts, and this is going to be tech and finance this time around. You're already seeing declines in white collar employment out of the ADP. And at some point, it's going to hit the BLS numbers. Is it next month, the month after? I don't know. And that'll be the official start. And once the unemployment rate gets over 4%, the Fed will start cutting 3% funds rate by the end of the year, because I think the unemployment rate will be at least five and a half. Once recessions start, it is a, a mistake to believe that you can control the federal government or the central bank can control the decline. I didn't give you a punchy answer, but here's the punchy answer. A recession starts on June 23rd. How's that? That's a very, very specific day. Well, that date's definitely one to go down in the diary. Thank you, Steve, for those instant insights. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks for listening. And from us at Global Data Thematic Intelligence, we will see you next time.